Can you hear that dog yapping? She's doing my head in. It's like a bummy, it's like a woman. Alright guys, how's it going? It's turned out nice again to say mother for a hey, um it's gonna get worse, you know. It's gonna get worse. Social media, Twitter in particular. Twitter uh is gonna get worse um with speculation and I'll tell you why. Right, first of all, I love Twitter, right? Twitter's my go-to at Duncan Older, Matt Cop Talk, Cop Talk TV, Cop Talk members, Cop Talk podcast, blah blah blah. Right, I love Twitter. Uh, I don't really do much tweeting on my own personal channel, Duncan Oldham, about football because I don't really want to interact with people, people about football on there. What I mean is I, I spend a lot of time on the members' website and on YouTube replying to comments and stuff like that. That's where I like to discuss the football. When it's my own personal stuff, I like, I don't know, I don't want to get stressed out about football, right? But I do like it. I can follow what I want, keep an eye on what I want. It's very quick to update. Uh, Twitter's great. Uh, if it's used correctly. If you're involved in the football community in general, maybe it's not a great experience because it's very toxic. Uh, you've got a lot of young fans on there, which is nothing wrong with young people, but it can be fucking annoying. I know what you're thinking, so can granddads, I get it. I understand, but I don't participate in it. The thing is, back in the day, if you like, the more news articles you, you, you wrote up and the more articles you published that were... Uh, that drove traffic, the more revenue you would make, right? Especially if you add headlines of interest. And a, a headline, whether it's in a newspaper or online, needs to grab attention, right? Whatever the subject, you know this, right? And then because the the advertising industry has dived away, which if you think back to it, back in the year 2000 maybe, I introduced a members website. Because I knew what was going to happen with advertising. I saw it coming in. I was the first one to introduce an optional membership. And it went down like a lead balloon. I was a, a con man, a scammer. The internet should be free, blah, blah, blah. And I got absolutely harassed. And my family and everything just for doing that, even though it was optional, right? And even and 99% of my content remained available to everyone. But I had to find an alternative way to generate revenue. Right, because at the end of the day, this is what I do. This is all I do, guys. All right, um, and all those people from the other sites and the, the, the you know the the great unwashed, if you like, they they gave me an hard time. But you know, all those other websites that slammed me at the time, the Liverpool websites, they all do the same today. I just got in first because I knew what was coming. Those that don't have, say, an optional way of like generating revenue and I can whether you believe me or not I, I try to generate revenue just to exist and to get by if I can get by pay me bills buy myself the odd treat or something I'm happy right that's how that's how I look at it as you get older you 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 want some things change right and you appreciate life a little bit more especially when you lose people but because it all changed because that industry especially the newspaper the print industry is nosedived right uh, and is in serious trouble, they realised that they could make more money, if you like, from their online versions of those websites and then clickbait the fuck out of people, which is like Reach PLC, which covers the Liverpool Echo, for example. And then all the little poxy blogs and all that, they all do the same thing um, because they'll, they'll get a few pennies. And if you get, if you've got a huge audience, those pennies make pounds, right? Uh, and today... I guess then became, you know, uh, YouTube appeared and social media and things like that. And from my own experiences with, uh, with YouTube, for example, my revenue increases during the transfer window. And that's just what it, that's what it used to do back in the day with the, with the written articles, right? Because obviously people want all the news as a buzz. Uh, and without changing anything, just talking about the subjects that are relevant to that day, your, your revenue increases, all right? At other times of the year, like February, if you're a long-time Cop Talk follower, if you're on the members' website, February, you'll notice that, like, in February, I struggle like hell because the January window's closed, it's winter, everyone's like, meh. It's really, really difficult, trust me, right? But if you watch in February, you know, if, if in February I start giving you loads of teasing headlines, that would be a giveaway, wouldn't it? Oh, don't struggle. Oh, look at that headline. He's fucking... He knows. But I don't do that. It's just something that I don't do. I should do, but I don't. And uh, with YouTube, someone left a comment. Um, 
I don't know if I can find it very quickly. Uh, yeah, someone says, I, I didn't used to mind the content on, and they mention a particular Liverpool FC fan channel, I think. Uh, well, I guess so by the name of it. It uh, doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, but I've begun to see the real agenda lately with, with all the wow, great news type thumbnails for bog standard, not really new stuff. Uh, and then someone replied saying, I started watching him for a while, but he is as clickbait as they come. We'll talk about any 10 year slink and give it traction, traction absolutely abysmal. Now I can't comment on that individual YouTube channel and I don't know if what they're saying is true. But any of these websites that, uh, or YouTube channels or whatever, that are, are acting like that, are doing so because they're looking at their, their, their revenue uh, and to be a YouTube partner, you need 1,000 subscribers and at least 4,000 watch hours uh, in a year, right? So they've got to keep the watch hours up. Once you get 1,000 subscribers, it's not going to go down. So, But they need to keep the watch hours up. So without that, they lose their YouTube partnership. Remember that, okay? If you lose your YouTube partnership, that means that you're not, you know, you're not making any money. Right, whatever you're into, there's nothing wrong with making money. We, we all have to, we have to live in. The people, you know, many times people on here have come to me over the years uh, on the Cop Talk website and they'll say, oh, so I've got to be on your members website, get to, uh, right? And that guy might be uh, an electrician, right? And he might help people out here and there every now and then, but then he'll go, well, ah, you know, like, I'm going to have to charge you for that, mate. You know, I've got bills to pay. They, these people that criticise content creators, I hate that definition, well, they don't do their job for nothing. We've all got to, you know what I mean? Like me, if people stop watching me or said, I don't like your website anymore, then fine. I'll go and do something else in life. I can make more money online doing stuff away from Cop Talk, guaranteed. But I actually, I actually really enjoy it. And the best part of it is you guys, right? True. So nobody works for free. We get it. There's nothing wrong with making money on the internet. But what you've got to do, right, is you have to decide, is this content creator worth my time. Are they genuine? Are they authentic? Look at Adam Naylor, right? Adam Naylor, uh, young YouTuber, if you like, I don't know if he likes that term, but it talk, all he does is talk about Liverpool Football Club, right? And he's met, I've mentioned him many times on here, never met the lad. He's the only Liverpool fan channel I watch in my spare time, of which I have little, right? Now, Adam currently doesn't have uh, a YouTube partnership, right? So therefore, if you go and look at his channel, N-A-Y-L-O-R, is how you spell his surname, you will see clickbaity shit. You'll just see him addressing things in the media, right? Because for every video Adam puts out, he's not making a penny from it, right? So that's where your attention should be, in my opinion. People like that. People that are putting these, ooh, I can't believe this happened. I can't believe... And, and then they're just like, they're just spinning a little bit of what's maybe been claimed by someone else. That's deceptive, in my opinion. I could come on here and make 50 videos a day, right? Saying, uh, uh, making it in, in a headline that's catchy. You guys watch it. I go, well, do you know what, guys? I've heard this in France. It sounds like a load of rubbish to me, right? But it, it drew people in to watch it, right? But then you, but I choose, I try not to choose, I was going to say, I try not to, I choose to only really touch on things that I think are really relevant. So we might talk about something that's claimed in Portugal, Spain, France, but only if it's really worth talking about. Like, it'd be easy to go on there and say, if someone's made this rumour, let's talk about it. So you've got to, you've got to decide, like these two guys have in the comments on, on my previous uh, video, I, I, don't, I don't know what the video was, uh, Benjamin Parvad, Kone and Turan Medicals claims, it's that video. Um, and I don't know if what they're saying is true. You have to decide who to trust. It's that simple. So there's nothing wrong with someone going online, making a few bob, paying the bills and all that, which is what I do, right? The thing is, me personally, I don't want to mislead anyone. And I don't want to use those tactics, but I don't need to, I think. Yes, I can generate more revenue, but I don't think I need to do that because I've been around these parts for a long time. So what's the point in, in misleading people that are good with me when people come in here and press that heart button under my videos, you know, they're, they're getting me a drink or, a, do you know what I mean? Like, so why would, I, why would I then want to trick that person? So YouTube is currently probably 
you know, Facebook have a bit of revenue sharing going on, but not a lot. And I think it's a little bit trickier to get uh, approved on on Facebook. Now, across, I'm not sure on Facebook how many people I've got, probably across the groups and the pages. Maybe, I don't know, I actually see, I have no idea. 150, 200,000 people, I don't know. Now, the Facebook page is monetized, but I don't really put anything on it. I don't, don't, don't do that, right? Um, I guess those people would if they were in a position to monetize. Twitter is the one where all the transfer rumors and speculation uh, originates from, right? In my opinion, it's very good. Uh, it's easy to browse. You can, you know, it's just, I think Twitter's very good. I really do. I enjoy it. But what's going to happen on Twitter now, and I don't know if you know this, and Twitter is brilliant under Elon Musk, you know, because I'm not going to criticise him, right? I, I like it. I like what's being done. And, but what he's doing is content creators, right? People are going to be able to apply and they'll succeed because if you think about it, Twitter will take a percentage of all the revenues eventually. They're not doing it initially. I think the first year they're not doing it. That's to get everyone in. But after that, they'll get a percentage of everything, right? So the more traffic and interaction that Twitter accounts generate, the more money Twitter makes. Think about it, right? So what's going to happen is people are not going to earn revenue per tweet, all right? Per tweet. So those Liverpool fan channels you follow, if they put out... 100 tweets in a day, it, they're not going to make money directly from each tweet, that first bit that they put out, right? But what happens then? People interact with said tweet, right? So the more controversial it is, the more juicy it is, the more replies. And Twitter account holders are going to earn money from the amount of interaction underneath the, origi the original tweet. So if you get someone on there going, oh, no, I can't believe what's happened to Kone and that medical... Yeah, I can't believe we pulled out of that deal I told you that we were in for, even though I was the only one that told you we were in for him and uh, that we were close, right? What's going to happen underneath that tweet? All those football fans are going, oh, no, what's happened? What can you tell me? Blah, blah, blah. And all them replies are going to go down, and you're scrolling like this. The more replies, the more money that Twitter account holder is going to make. That's what's coming. It's imminent, right? It's Some people are already making revenue from it, but it's been expanded. And I think that's a shame because, like I say, I think Twitter's great. But I need you guys to know this. This is coming and it might completely change things. I mean, at the moment, these people tend to put misleading tweets out and then they'll follow up with, oh, and while you're here, you might want to buy the new Liverpool kit and they put a link in and blah, blah, blah. Right, OK, I never do that. But and I've got all the partnerships with the club, the shop and everything, and I never post a fucking affiliate link to any of it ever. Can't be arsed, I ain't got time for that. But that's what they do. And there's one guy on there in particular, so I wouldn't call him a website or, well, he does have a website. Uh, all he, that's all he does is big, exciting news. And then, in, you know, oh, by the way, you can buy these uh, LeBron James sneakers if you want. Do you know what I mean? Blech. So, each to their own. There's nothing wrong with anyone making a few bob. But beware. You're going to see, if you think Twitter's bad now, it's going to get even worse. Because there's incentive for those people to uh, to 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 mislead you further, and you know this is a, this is a sensitive subject for me. This is something I bang on about a lot. Why is that? Because it's the one thing that I have to deal with every day of the week. I guarantee you, if I go in the cop talk chat room on here now, right? Let's have a look. I guarantee you that there will be people in there saying, "Let's have a look. Where is it?" Exactly. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, is anyone having trouble getting on the members' website? No. And then he's put panic over. I'm in. Nice one. Uh, you know, th th there's examples here. I can see them here, but I'm not going to read them all out. There's one there. Look, I, w I won't mention it word for word because I don't want anyone to feel like I'm having a go at them. But they're on there, and they'll, you know, the. They're, they're, they're adding these people to the debate and it just creates more nonsense. And I have to spend all day going, oh, guys, please ignore that. No, it's, just, it's just nonsense. Listen to the people you already know you can trust. People criticise James Pierce. I read every single thing James Pierce says. 
You know, in my opinion, Paul Joyce and David Ornstein, Ornstein, I think they pronounce it actually, uh, they're the two, that, they're the, probably the only two people that you should listen to. Don't even listen to me. I, I, all I can do is pass on the vibe and uh, there are people, but I don't, I don't feel I need to justify myself and, and give it the big I am. I don't need to do that. But some of these people, you, you, you're giving too much time to them. And, the, and at the moment, they're going to change the way that they operate, guys. They're going to change the way they operate. I'm going to open that window so it's very hot in here. All right, so what I'm saying is they did it with the websites back in the day, right? Then came social media, so all the concentration from the websites that these people ran. Uh, you know, you visit a website today, how many adverts do you see on it, right? How many adverts do you see on that website. If you visit a website about Liverpool Football Club or any football in general, and it is plastered with adverts, right? You, that is a sign of, of monetization, of extreme monetization. We really need to make money, we really need to make money. Maybe they're struggling or, or that, that's just their pure incentive. And that should be the first thing you do when you visit a website is how many adverts are actually on here? Good, because this is quite a, an interesting headline. Is it because they want me to see all these adverts or do they actually want me to read the content of the article? Go to coptalk.com, click on any of the, you know, the main things on the front page. Is that place an absolute nightmare for adverts? I don't think it is, there's hardly anything on there, right? Uh, I think we have one, maybe a banner that drops at the top for a few seconds. I think you maybe see that once a day or something, I don't know. Uh, and, it, and, and that goes, it goes completely against what I like, but I had to take it because I needed the money. There's the difference. I needed the money. So I was like, yeah, right, I'll do it. The amount of adverts I've turned on over, over the years is incredible. The members on the members website, they always say, don't put adverts on here, please, man. Make yourself a bit more, you know, I won't do it. No, it's ad free and it stays that way. And that's them looking out for me saying, put more ads on, generate more revenue. No, we're not doing it. The point I'm trying to say is, I saw it all happen 25 years ago. Was it 25 years ago? I'm not taking the piss now. Year 2000, 23 years ago, right? So 23 years ago, I saw what was coming and I was right and I did the right thing. If I hadn't introduced a member's website, I wouldn't be here today because I wouldn't survive. Without my cop talk members, I wouldn't survive because that's my main source of income, right? And it's hard, trust me. And what was going to say what I was going to say was I hate the fact that I have to have memberships and subscriptions because Cop Talk in my opinion was better pre-2000 pre-2001 or whatever when everything was just available to everyone that's how it should be but the reality is if I press that light switch there Nothing's going to happen if everything on Cop Talk was free and available to everyone. Do you get my drift? It's just they it wouldn't make enough revenue because the advertising on the internet is pants now. So back in, say, the late 90s, let's say you put, you know, you, you could be getting, let's say, 5,000 a month to 10,000 a month or something like that in advertising, right? Just from having normal adverts, no clickbait, no nothing those same amount of adverts that are displayed, so the same amount of people viewing them, the same amount of adverts today, you'd be lucky if you got 100, right? So that's a bit of a drop. Would you accept that for 10,000 to 100, right? So if you're the person writing that, those articles, you have to write a lot more articles, right? To get anywhere, <laughs> you can't even get near 10,000 uh, based on the old pricing, right? So you're having to make a lot more effort or you could just... You know, I can put an article out. Oh, you know, uh, John John Barnes in, enjoy uh, you know a little break in Surrey today. No one's interested in that, so no one will visit it, right? So it's not it's the, the a real hardcore Liverpool smart. Go, oh, I want to see what John Barnes is doing. You know, it's the same with the videos on here. You look at the ones where uh, I put a video on the other day about Melwood, about the importance of Melwood, right, to do with the purchase repurchase of it. Hardly anyone watched that video. I did a video uh, when I visited Chicago Fire FC. Uh, I was in Chicago twice last year. One, I think it was April, May time maybe. Uh, and I was invited in by Chicago Fire Soccer Club to be shown around the facilities. I've only put one part of it up. There's another one. And when I get around to doing it, I'll do it. But nobody was really interested. You know, nobody was really like, oh, 
don't he, he does a few folk this must be good because that it's it's interesting you know obviously Shakiri went there and I remember a, a goalkeeper that was there at the time and I was given a private tour of the stadium uh, by the facilities pre-match just me and, and, and the main man there right and all those little trips like that, they add to the knowledge. And all right, we'd maybe not deal with Chicago Fire FC or the MLS much. But, you know, if I go and do that in different places, it all contributes to the knowledge of what you have over time and the contacts and the friends and everything. And that's how you build up a network, right? So, but nobody really watched it. And it upset me a little bit because I was like, fucking hell, you know, I filmed this for everyone. I thought they'd really enjoy it to try and show them, right? what they do in American football because we have American owners, right? So I remember that when I went to, um, God, what was it called? New England soccer team or something. I can't remember what they're called. That's not the name. Uh, I can't remember. Many, many years ago, I went with Smoot. And to be honest, people in the UK and that didn't really have any understanding of MLS. And I was like, we need to go and see what they do on match day outside the stadium and stuff and show people back home because we just got American owners. And I was of the opinion, I said, guys, I think this stuff's all gonna happen at Anfield. And this is what they did, this is what they introduced. Because instead of going to a game of football for 90 minutes, they want you there earlier to, to spend money in the, in the beer tent. So they want, you know, like I saw this outside this, uh, I think it was in New Jersey, I can't remember. It's near New York somewhere, a fucking long time ago. Uh, the video will be on here probably. And I saw like little kids, you know, taking penalties with people associated to the club outside the stadium. So it's not even in, just around the perimeter and that. And I remember saying on here saying, guys, I think this is good. I like to see the kids having a good time. It's making the whole match day experience, you know. And in theory, you could even pop along if you didn't have a match ticket. Maybe that's a bit too extreme if you're too far away or whatever, but you can still soak up the atmosphere. So I tried to do little videos like that to explain things. Now, when I was last over at Chicago Fire FC last year, they had tables behind the goal can you believe that can you imagine and i was like can you imagine that anfield all right so you could sit down and have a bite to eat behind the goal not like tables like crunched in together like big round tables with 10 people i'm like you would do at a dinner and dance or an event or a club event and that this guy's telling me how much to pay him per ticket imagine sat there having some tweet ball in your head do you know what i mean i'm sure there was nets but people don't they're not interested in the boring headlines, all right? So those websites that were taking all that money all them years ago, they had to find new ways. And that was either put a lot more effort in or mislead people and clickbait them. So we had that with the websites, right? Now, if you look at The Athletic, it's a different way that they finance a model, a different model of everything, right? So they don't need to clickbait you. They did pledge that there would be no advertising. They did bring advertising in, which isn't a good sign. And it also goes against, be like me putting advertising on a member's website when that was always one of the selling points. I know you've got ad blockers and all that, but they don't always work or whatever. But the Athletic, they don't need to clickbait you because they have a revenue stream from people that go, oh, I'll pay you a five or a month or a couple of quid or whatever, because I appreciate it. I actually think the Athletic is worth it. I think it's good. I think it's good. And they're not clickbaiting you versus, say, the Liverpool Echo that just want to mislead you, allegedly, in the opinion of many. So the websites have done it. The Athletic took the brave you know, decision to try in the UK to see if they could survive and exist via that. But the only thing is, we can't all pay for all these different subscriptions. You know what I mean? Like, you might have a satellite subscription, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you might have Disney, you might have Apple TV, you might have even a dodgy box, which... All right, some people go, oh, I only pay 100 a year or 50 a year, whatever, but it still adds up, right, over a year, divide it by 12. We can't pay for the Telegraph, the Times, the Athletic, we just can't all do that. I was going to tell you there's a way around some of these things, but uh, you'd have to be in, on Cop Talk members, or if you're a channel member on here, go to the community tab and there's a couple of helpful tips on there that you, where you can access all the things you want to access, but apparently, friend told me. Um, but that's a perk of being, you know, a supporter of mine is I look after you. So they, look what we're talking about. So the Athletic did that uh, and the Times as well. But, you know, sometimes I'll go to a newspaper and I want to read something about something to do with politics or something in the news. And it's, it's a paywall. And I think, well, I'm not paying for it because this isn't an individual that I'm supporting. You know, this isn't Adam Naylor. You know, Adam Naylor, when he gets, I'm sure one day he'll have a memberships, maybe I'll, I'll be the first person to subscribe to him because I'll look at that and think I enjoy his content. 
His art's in the right place. He's not trying to mislead anyone. These big organisations, yes, they've got journalists to pay and bills to pay. They're no different. And you have to judge it on an individual basis. But I'm not going to pay for the Times. Well, I, I, <laughs> you don't need to pay for the Times. All right, just saying. Uh, or the Athletic, DKB. But I actually do uh, genuinely pay for uh, some of these things for the Cop Talk members' website, but I wouldn't on a personal level. I know it's a long video, but I'm trying to help you. So the the internet, dot, the, the dot com bubble burst in 2000, websites crashed, many of them went out of business. Um, fortunately for me, I, I saw what was coming. I introduced the members website uh, and that's my main source of revenue today. Uh, without those people and without the people that support this YouTube channel and my podcast and the, the people that click that are, and I mention it all the time, but without those good people, of which there's only a fraction that do it, maybe they can only do it, I'm sure there's a lot more that could if they wanted to. Without those people, I'd be on my ass. Do you know what I mean? But do you still see me adopting the tactics of these other YouTube channels that are mentioned, for example? No, you won't see that. Anyway, so you've seen it with the websites and blogs. You're now seeing it with YouTube because these fuckers like, they think, oh, I can mention that. That'll get me another five or another ten or something like that, right? And, and fair play to them if that's what they want to do. It's none of our business what they want to do. They can do what the fuck they want, right? But it's coming to Twitter. It's coming to Twitter. And Twitter's already a cesspit for fake news and people that want to deliberately mislead you because they're pushing affiliate links on you and things like that, right? So I'm sure there's some ITKs out there on Twitter that you've looked and go, hang on, don't I follow him and he don't put anything out. To, he's not selling anything. Uh, you know, he's not he's not doing anything, he's just blah, blah, blah. Then maybe, that's, maybe that person's got an out of go, but they're still winding you up a little bit, I think, in my opinion, because there isn't one person on Twitter that I follow, even on the sly, to uh, to be sure of anything, whether it's confirming something or negative. And I think I, sh I would be following such people if they really did exist. When, tw when Twitter starts offering the revenue share to these people, you're going to see more and more guff on Twitter, I'm telling you. You are because they get. If you look at uh, 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 look at one of the claims to do with Liverpool Football Club being sold by Ben Jacobs, for example, right? Freelance journalist that knows everything about everything and totally rode the the old Liverpool's up for sale thing. You know, look at his replies. Liverpool fans are desperate for news along that front. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of replies. The same even with a brand new Twitter account that's created from. No way, and, you, and then maybe they use an alias. Don't even use their name. At least Ben Jacobs is a freelance journalist, a professional. He's still a professional, whether you believe what he says or not, right? But you'll get one of these ITKs with a fake name. I'm out there, I'm accountable. You say, ah, nah, I get hassle for it. You're going to have them for years, you know what I mean? But, and I can understand why some people might want to have a fake name or whatnot. Like me, I don't give a fuck. It's like water off a duck's ass to me, right? If someone wants to have a go at me. But the thing is, right, them fuckers... They're going to mislead you like anything. They're going to mislead you like anything because all them hundreds of replies, even from a, a, an alias account, one that's just... Do you know what I mean? Like, we, we all know about a certain uh, Twitter account that posts about every club going. You know, like, massive news at 10 o'clock tonight. And you'll see the, the comments are turned off on a lot of them tweets. And the reason why they're turned off is just people reply going, you're full of shit, mate. Right? But I guarantee you... When that account has revenue sharing capabilities, then replies won't be turned off because even awful comments is interaction. And for every comment that's displayed, that person will earn a bit of money. So you think about that. Do you know what I mean? I turn my comments off on a lot of my cop talk tweets. And that's not because anyone gives me any abuse at all. It's because I don't really care what anyone thinks. And maybe that's arrogant. Maybe that's shite. But it's not really because the people that follow me on, the, on Twitter will be here watching this video and they will comment on here, which is where I like to uh, to read the comments. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't genuinely have time to spend time on Twitter. I'll put some on there. I don't care if anyone agrees with that opinion or that claim or not. I couldn't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? So to me, I just turn the comments off. You know? So it, but that's it. But the other accounts, the big accounts or whatever, you know, these people that are out there trying to push shit on you, that particular account I'm talking about, look how many things they retweet. Oh, if you want to bet, you should follow this account. You know why that is? Because they've been paid to do it. Look in the profiles of people that say, uh, you know, advertising, a Twitter account, advertising, email me, right? 
if they've got 300,000, 200,000 or some 100,000, someone, you know, they'll say, give us 50 quid and I'll, I'll retweet them. You can understand it, right? Nothing wrong with it. But there is something wrong with it when you guys get your heart set on something. And, and I, you know, this, we've had this conversation on the podcast recently. Someone sent an email to me saying, you're right, Dunk, about the, the mental side of it. Because a lot of people, uh, you know, all right, you might, you might, Think now you might think, well, they're just soft, they're not. No, because people go through a lot of struggles in life. And football, especially Liverpool Football Club, might be that one person's thing that's keeping them going. And I know I've been in that situation. I've been in that situation. Not so much today, but you guys keep me going. Because when you leave nice comments and things, I always think, ah, it's all right, yeah. You know, people do appreciate, people do like you. There's people out there, you know, that maybe don't have the interaction that I get and maybe all they've got to look forward to at the end of the week because of their shit marriage, their shit, you know, they've lost their mum, they've lost their dad, they're, they're ill or they've, they've got big worries or financial problems and for 90 minutes at the weekend they can escape it and follow their beloved Liverpool football club and they're getting and it makes them happy for a little bit, right? And then they're back to reality again, yeah? So when they want to sign the Bellinghams in the world, which we all do, all right? And it mean when someone goes out there and deliberately misleads them because they might go, oh, God, this is going to happen. You know what I mean? And then it doesn't happen. And what happens? They're deflated. They're sad. You know? So maybe I'm too soft. Maybe I'm too soft about stuff like this. I don't know. And it really does fucking piss me off. So uh, the, the, the video, I think we might have got there in the end. The video is to warn you that Twitter revenue sharing is coming but it's only coming for interaction. So it's only coming for the replies. So if someone makes a bold claim and no one replies to it, it's not gonna make jack shit, do you know what I mean? If they get people in the comments, all the way down, you know how Twitter works, when you got all them little comments all the way down, hundreds and hundreds of people commenting bullshit, even if it's bullshit, don't believe you, get back to KFC, your Trump, any of that stuff, right? They're still gonna, they're gonna make money from it and you're gonna see an increase and an uptick in it. And I don't know what the way around that is, guys, to be honest with you, because even now, I already think, I can't be doing me talking about this shite anymore, what I see on there, you know? So, but I think it might help the Cop Talk members' website because I think a lot of people go, fuck it, we'll just go to a more mature environment. And it's not an advertisement, it's the reality. You ask any of the members that, uh, or they'll come here and go, no, nah, we, we don't need that, you know? So anyway, that's it. Uh, I, I don't know if you if this video was of an interest, but... You know, maybe some people watch this video and, and don't give a fuck. I mean, you all make your own minds up, that's fine. But you've got to remember, not everyone's as switched on as maybe you are, you know? And there's a lot of young fans out there as well. Maybe it's harmless fun. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Which is probably more true. But it's going to get worse. And that's, that's all I want you to know. It's going to get worse. Uh, so be on your guard. That's it. Thank you for watching my video. Please thumbs up the video. Please drop me a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.